Hello and welcome to Nutanix Tech Topics, Link Aggregation Part 2. My name is Bhavesh Vora. Today I'm going to talk about uh, dynamic link aggregation using LSCP. In Part 1, we saw how to configure static ether channel on ESXi using IP hash. And we also saw that uh, this would require upstream routing or switching device to be configured for static port channel. Uh, also, if you have static uh, ether channel or port channel configured on a upstream physical device, then you have to use IP hash uh, as its load balancing policy on ESXi. So the major difference between a static ether channel and a dynamic ether channel is the use of negotiation protocols such as LSCP. In conjunction with ESXi, Static Ether channel can be configured either on a standard vSwitch or a distributed vSwitch, whereas uh, LSCP can be configured only on a distributed vSwitch. Let's check it out how we can configure LSCP on a VD VDS or a distributed vSwitch. All right, so here I've logged on to one of the vCenter servers. The LSCP is supported only on the distributed switch, so we need to use vCenter server, and that's where uh, the distributed switch is configured through the networking views. I've selected this test switch here. Uh, right now, I do not have any lag group, uh, which means there is no LSCP. I have also logged on to one of the ESXi host. So let's check. This is the command, ESXi network vSwitch DVS VMware LSCP config get to get the current LSCP configuration. So it's disabled currently on the switch. Let's go ahead and configure. So first thing is to click this plus sign, give whatever name you want to give. I'll go with the default lag one. I'll select two ports. Uh, there are two modes, active and passive. I'll go with the passive. Here one thing to note is that uh, depending on your upstream routing and switching devices configuration, you may want to adjust this. The supported configurations are active, 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 passive, passive, active, but not passive, passive, for the obvious reason that if you select passive, passive on both the ends, then no side will uh, initiate any negotiations of LSCP and the channel will not be formed. Currently, I'm going with passive, assuming the upstream is on the active side. The load balancing mode, I'll go with the default, but there are more options available. The default one is source and destination IP address, TCP, UDP port, and VLAN. As opposed to IP hash, we have a lot more load balancing algorithm. So this is where you set the load balancing algorithm at the lag group level. And click OK to save it. All right, let's just refresh it. Make sure it gets saved. Now we have the lag group created and it is now available for consumption and LSCP is enabled. Now to consume it, we need to set it at the distributed port group level. So I have this distributed port group created. Let's go ahead and go to manage section on the property, click edit. All right, and select the teaming and failover. Uh, now it's already there as unused. We need to move it to active. As we move to active here, uh, we see the red icon here which says that basically you cannot have mix and match of lag and regular DV uplink. So we need to move those things as unused. You cannot also place it in under standby. So it has to be under unused. Okay, now one more thing to note here is that the load balancing policy over here will be completely ignored. And whatever load balancing policy we have set while configuring the lag group will be the effective load balancing policy. So click OK. All right, so that's done. Now let's go ahead and check the host connected to this particular DV switch. Related objects and all right. So, although the lag group is assigned to this particular port group, the lag group itself doesn't have any member network cards 
or a physical adapter. So we need to actually select that particular distributed switch and select this particular icon, manage the physical network adapters and add the network cards. So, so there are two lag members we have selected. So we see lag 1-0 and lag 1-1. Select the first one. Use one of the unused network adapters, VMNIC1. Select the lag 1-1. Repeat the same thing. Select the remaining one. Click OK. Click OK. Let's refresh this page. All right, so now let's check out at the command line. Config get. We see that the lag group is created here. The DVS name is test. Lag group lag one. Lag group has a lag ID. It has the member network card, its mode and load balancing policy, and it's enabled. There are a few other commands that we can use to see its status. Typically, this is used during troubleshooting. Let's say if you do not see any kind of a LSCP packets, then you can actually use these commands to see what are the status of the LSCP, whether you see any LSCP packet coming in and out. You can also check some states. Okay, so there are right now there are no receive or transmit LSCP. PDUs, but in an active network, you would see, you know, the exchanges of LSCP PDUs over here. These are basically the commands to, to do some troubleshooting. So that's basically it about uh, LSCP. If you like to get some more information on this topic, please uh, check out the links mentioned in the video description below. Thanks for watching. I hope this was useful to you and stay tuned for more tech topics videos.